I welcome you to another week of uh, Central Moments. And we are at the halfway point, believe it or not. We are in week 20 of our 40-week journey through the storyline of the Bible cover to cover. And we're going to be taking um, some key moments out of the life of the prophets. In the last half of the Old Testament, um, most of the writing of the Old Testament centers around the writings of both the major and the minor prophets. Now, minor prophets weren't less important. They were just less long-winded. The major prophets would be the larger books like Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah. And the minor prophets would be some of the shorter books like Jonah. And we're going to look at Jonah today. And we're going to have to bring our hearts to the Lord today. All our prejudices, all our hatred, all of this gets confronted for us in Jonah. We're actually rewinding a little bit before Israel to the north and Jerusalem to the south have been totally destroyed because of their rebellion against God. We're going back in history a little bit and picking up on one of the most famous prophets, Jonah. Now, the first two chapters of Jonah are so dramatic and that we really miss the main point of Jonah, which is in the last two chapters of that four-chapter book. In the first two chapters, God says, Jonah, go to Nineveh, which is in present day, located in, in, where Mosul, Iraq, is, is today. He said, go to, go to Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital city of Israel's enemies. There was a lot of reasons why Jonah, first of all, hated Ninevites and would be looked at as maybe a traitor by other Jewish people if he went to try to seek Nineveh's salvation. So he said, God, I'm not going to do this. So I'm going to, I'm going to get on a ship and go the other direction. And so you know that he ends up being eaten by a great fish, spit up on the, uh, he has quite a prayer meeting in the belly of that fish in Jonah 2, and he ends up being spit up. And he says, probably once in my life is enough to go through that. So I will go to Nineveh. So verse 3 of Jonah 3 now, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city, and it took three days to go through it. And Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, and here's his sermon. Here's the only record of his sermon. Forty more days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. What a sermon. There's, there's no message of repentance here or anything. I mean, he, he wants them to be overthrown. So he said, he, he goes in this huge city and just says, in 40 days, God's going to nuke you. He's going to get rid of you. And what happens is Nineveh repents and turns and God has mercy. And God takes back his judgment over Nineveh. So suddenly Jonah hits this incredible, incredible dilemma. That sometimes in our hearts we hit. What do you do when you find out that God really loves people that you don't particularly like? I mean, I hate to admit there's people in our lives we may not like, but... But that's the reality at some point in, in many of our experience. And yet God loves you. find out God loves them. Well, this only made Jonah angrier. Verse 1 of chapter 4. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, that God would not judge Nineveh. And he became angry. And he prayed to the Lord, Lord, isn't this what I said to you when I was still at home? That's why I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. He said, this is it. And sometimes we think in the Jonah story, if you end with chapter 2, it's like, you know, it looked like Jonah didn't want to be a prophet, didn't want to follow God's will for his life, so, so God ate him with a fish. But, um, but the issue was that Jonah didn't want to be a prophet. The issue was he hated Ninevites. And look what he says in the next verse. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. He said, God, I know your heart too well. I knew if the Nineveh even had a chance, you might, you might have mercy on it because this is who you are. You, you relent from sending calamity. You're slow to anger. You're abounding in love. And I knew if I even showed up there, if they responded the right way, you would just end up having on mercy on these people that I hate. So, so what he does is he, he doesn't just leave Nineveh. He plants himself out in the desert outside of the walls of Nineveh and just watches, hoping that maybe God will change his mind. And he doesn't, and he just gets angrier. And then finally God confronts him over his... You think you have a right to be angry? Because uh, his shade tree had withered. 
Verse 11, should I not have concern, God says to Nineveh, uh, to, to, to Jonah, should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their left hand from their right. In other words, they don't know what they're doing spiritually. And also, if you have a pet, you'll love this and many animals. Even God was concerned about the animals. Jeremiah's ticked off that God would have mercy. And God just comes back to people. And so what about people? What about people I love? And that's God's heart. Let's bring our prejudices to him today. Let's, let's, let's bring our, our, our anger at other people and what we think they represent. Let's bring it to him. Let's let it die. Let's let it be crucified in Christ at the cross. Let Jesus' blood shed, shed to forgive us. Let it wash our hearts today. And, and let's just say, by your resurrection spirit, Lord, help me to love others like you love them. Father, do this, we pray. Wash our hearts clean. Forgive prejudice, racism. Forgive forgive favoritism in our lives. Forgive our just, our, our just disgust with some people, God, that you actually love and desperately want to reach. My God, just cleanse our hearts and fill us with your love, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.